This week, we are continuing our in-depth look at drought and how it's impacting the way we live. Water shortage is a serious threat in many parts of the province, especially on the islands and in rural communities. Some researchers, though, have developed a way to collect water now from fog. Our Darius Madavi joins us now to explain how this works. And Darius, I guess the obvious first question, how do you drink fog? When you put it like that, it sounds crazy, uh, especially because most people think of fog as a gas, like the air. Uh, but really, fog is just extremely tiny droplets of liquid water. And we see the droplets are suspended in the air because they fall so slowly, it looks like they're not moving at all. Uh, now, what does that mean? Well, first, if you're walking through fog, you could make the argument that you're swimming. I'm not going to, but I do hope to see a lively debate in the comments when this gets posted. Uh, but more importantly, it means there may be an untapped source of water. And as one expert told me, that can be even more important following major fire events, like the ones we know all too well here in BC. When that foliage isn't there, then the structures to collect the fog aren't there. So one of the things we can do is set up structures that will allow that collection of water to occur, at least to some extent, to help regrowth of the forest. That's one example. The other is if we want to use the water for our own purposes, then by setting up our own mesh, we have a, a better way to be able to route it. Trees are great fog catchers, but they're dripping it onto the ground. And it's more difficult to establish a way to collect the water from trees for us to use. Hmm. So practically speaking, what does this entail? How do you actually capture the fog? It's actually pretty straightforward. It just requires some base, uh, some investment in the basic infrastructure. You basically need some sturdy poles, some vertical mesh or netting, just typically made out of plastic nowadays, uh, and then a collection and holding system. There's a lot of research being done actively into creating better materials to make those fog nets. But even the technology we have now and had a decade ago can be really efficient. There's a village in Chile that once used fog collection uh, technology for about 10 years. And that was a village of about 300 people. And they had, at their maximum, they had about 150 square meter mesh several kilometers above the village in, a, in an area that receives a lot of fog in a mountainous area above the village. According to Fernandez, that setup was enough to provide water to the entire village for the full decade it operated, which definitely shows the promise of this solution. And he also mentioned the amount of water that you can get from this really comes down to the amount of netting you have and the size of it. And it can range anywhere from one liter per square meter per day to up to 20 liters. So it really could be a significant amount. Sounds promising, uh, no doubt. But how do we know if it will work here in BC specifically? You really do just have to try it. There's a lot of variables at play here. And Fernandez had another great line. He said, uh, not all fogs are created equal. Uh, the size of the droplets and how many there are really determine how much water that fog holds. But some parts of BC are definitely well suited for at least a trial run. You'd want to try this in places that A, have seen severe water shortages in recent years, uh, B, get a ton of fog, and C, have that reliable foggy season happen when rain is scarce, which means at those times water shortages are most likely, fog could be an untapped and useful source. So I don't know about you, but when I hear those criteria, my mind immediately goes to remote places, especially on Vancouver Island and on its west coast. A former colleague of mine experienced one of those water shortages just last summer on Nootka Island, about 70 kilometers up the coast from Tofino, where there was a near complete lack of rain for months on end. She told me there was definitely times this technology would have come in handy. We were facing a pretty big water shortage and had to employ um, lots of water conservation methods. However, as a lot of people may have heard, August is commonly referred to as fogist, where that area has pretty dense and frequent fog. Um, so this idea of fog capture is definitely something that could be used in these areas. For places like Nootka Island, the idea of pulling water out of thin air is definitely an appealing one. And no doubt, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for this. That's science and climate specialist, Darius Madavi.